welcome back everyone it's been two match days since we last spoke i'm here again with oscar and let's get right into the meat of things oscar let's start in the top of the table there are some big games in la liga this weekend we'll start with real madrid sevilla and it was it was quite an interesting game but real madrid showed their strength once again what else would happen they're just that good like yeah real madrid started this game really well and then sevilla kind of persisted and then go back into it. And just when you thought Sevilla might escape with a point, boom, Real Madrid hit them twice. Like, it just goes to show, no matter what happens, there are three certainties in life. Death, tax, and a Real Madrid victory. <laughs> yeah, at the moment, it sure looks that way. And the thing about this, or I'll say Sevilla performance, was that I thought at the time Sevilla were the best in the game, that's when Real Madrid came up with a sucker punch. Yeah, I mean, the thing is that you have to feel sorry, a bit sorry for a family, depending on how you attached you are to that result. Because, you know, the Sevilla are doing well with the false 19. And then he's like, okay, rightly so, I'll bring on the number nine to try and give us the extra thing we need because we're very well on top of things. And then that number nine now, I mean, I don't say that's a mistake. But because it happens in your own half, and for Real Madrid, they're just too fast. <laughs> yeah, so it, yeah, it, it's it, it, you feel, you have to feel for some party a bit there. Like, do you think Real Madrid's results um, this season is because they have something different? They're playing almost like a different level to the rest of the teams in the league so far. Yeah, I, I guess you can say that. I see this season, there's not a game that they've won that you can argue that they didn't deserve to win. They've been, they've, they've improved on last season, which, you know, is to be expected of Ancelotti because he was improving during the end of last season. And yeah, it's like, there's just something about them, whether it's outplaying you or just blitzing on the counter-attack, they always have different ways to hurt you. And it's so hard to come up with a surefire way to stop them. The only thing that has stopped them from winning this season in the league in Osasuna, we have to remember, Real Madrid missed a penalty. So yeah. Osasuna had lady luck on their side that night. Yeah. But I'll, I'll say in terms of um, tactically, in terms of the pattern of the game, there are three teams that I feel have done really well against them. Mallorca, I would say, apart from Os- Osasuna is there and Almeria too, but I feel Seville is the fourth team today or yesterday. Yeah, I can say that. And unlike those other three teams, Sevilla have or are supposed to have much more qualities. Just two of the goals came from mistakes. So yeah. as a team, Real Madrid will punish you if you give them this a little inch. Yeah, and I'll say the one criticism about Sevilla is they didn't seem to have much pace going, going up front, did they? Yeah, they didn't have much pace at all. But on the other hand, I think San Paolo sacrificed any pace for like good combinations because Isco, Rakitic, Tormela, the rest of them were making good because they had so many ball to fit kind of players. It helped them progress up the pitch little by little. But yeah, given the lineups San Paolo has been playing, some of them have been very confusing, by the way. You'd like to think he should mix all the kind, all the elements he can possibly mix instead of having a full team of ball to fit merchants. Yeah, yeah. Let's talk about the good because I feel a lot of this game turned on the substitutions that both managers made. Mm-hmm. We already spoke about Rafa Mir coming on and Sevilla trying to go for the game, but I also felt Madrid made some really good substitutions with Vasquez coming on who scored, with Asensio coming on who gave an assist, with Camavinga coming on for Chomini who I didn't think was having. A great game up until yeah. that point. Yeah, definitely. I feel the, the the one sub in particular that made the difference was the was Asensio because you have to remember it was his pass that said Vinny Tron go and then he gave the assist for Valverde. So and when he brought him on funny enough, I you think Asensio would go to the right wing, but Valverde stayed there. And Asensio was playing like a central midfielder. So I guess that was a way of just I can and try to read the game well and so you needed someone that can make a killer pass from midfield. And if you have to sacrifice a bit of midfield solidity, it's fine. You took the gamble and it's worked out excellently. 
Yeah, and it did to perfection. And Real Madrid, in terms of the schedule coming up, I believe they have Girona next, then Rio, then Cadiz. They're going to win all three, aren't they? Um, you know, I would have hoped Girona would beat them like they used to, but then Atleti beat Girona for the first time this year, so I'm not. <laughs> and Girona have won Carlos. So, um... Yeah. Six one Real Madrid. <laughs> yeah, he, uh, he didn't play today, but that's a discussion for later on in the podcast. <laughs> yeah, should we move on to Barcelona? Uh, yeah. Yeah, so Barca today they won convincingly four zero. Usman Dembele obviously saw the criticisms that we made on this podcast and decided to shut shut us up, and he was brilliant today. He had three assists. He scored a goal. He mm. stuck it to his former manager. I don't think I, mean, I, I don't think there's bad blood between any of the players I invested. Like because they were angry when he was sat. But anyway, I, yeah, Usman played really well today. It's kind of frustrating because I'm like, this guy's on play ball his day. Why is his day not <laughs> every match day like someone like Rodrigo Vinicius? Yeah. yeah. But and, and... still it, it was great to see him play well. It was also great to see Javi tried different things in the last two games. Yeah. And also Frankie de Jong has come into the team. Um, Barcelona, they also played in midweek and they were very, they were excellent against Villarreal and he thought maybe that was the height of the performance and it got even a higher level today. Do you think mm-hmm. this performance has come a little bit too late, especially in the Champions League scenario? <sighs> the thing is that... Because this this whole schedule has been jam-packed and there's less space between Champions League matches, I feel it's yeah, it's definitely a case of too little, too late. Because you know, if we played like this, like, granted, Inter a much tougher team than the team, the Athletic Club, for instance. But you know, you think you you'd have hoped to see the tactical flexibility that Xavi has shown in these last two games be shown in the Inter game because against Inter, he did the same thing twice and failed. Yeah. So, But for me, seeing all four of the regular midfielders start is actually a good thing to do sometimes, depending on the opposition. Because I remember we did this against Atletico earlier in the year and we beat them pretty convincingly. So it's good to see that Xavi is learning a bit. Uh, and where does this put Sergio Busquets? Because the youngest comment, he's mm-hmm. played a similar role to him. Do you think this is the, the time we see that transition away, given the fact mm. that let's get I don't, I don't think yet. I don't think it's time for that yet. I feel like people are forgetting that Frankie De Jong also played as a six against Real Sociedad and they were, they were totally dominators for 60 minutes. So mm. I feel like De Jong as a six is a good choice depending on the opponent. Yeah. So I feel like there's room for either of them because Busquets has played well this season. It's just that like the rest of the team, he had a bad week yeah. or a bad week and a half, should I say. But yeah, I feel there's space for two of them to exist together. There's space for either one of them and there's space for him, for Gavi and Pedri, even as we saw today. So I'm just hoping that Javi gets the right combinations anytime we're playing different teams. Yeah, a player we've been very critical over Barcelona's terrible week was Rafinha, and he hasn't gotten the minutes on the pitch since. Yeah, I feel it's des- like other people deserve chances. And Ferran Torres, for instance, has played very well in multiple positions in these last two games. Fatu played well. Dembele has since has been knocked back into him. So hopefully, you see the same with Rafinha, and then that just encourages all four of them to just compete against each other in a healthy way. Yeah, that's that should be how things should go. Let's mm-hmm. transition to Athletic because we were all praising them at the start of the season. It mm-hmm. was a brilliant start from them. They were playing exciting football. But as I alluded to last week, was that just the result of the calendar? Because if you look at teams that are playing, most of them were in the bottom half. And now the big boys are common. They've sort of become from a lion to... A small cat. Yeah. I mean, against Atletico, to be fair, they created enough chances to equalize at least. It's just that Gerbich was a monster. Against Atafi, yeah, definitely you have to look at them and say, 
they, it's a missed opportunity because Setafe is a team you'd expect them to beat, and they had the lead twice. Against Barca, the, I'll say the same thing after that. I, th- I think when Barca are playing well, there's not much you can really do about them unless you're Real Madrid or another Champions League level team, which seems yeah. to be our weakness. But against the other teams in the league, I think you can't really fault them for losing to Barca and Madrid this season. Yeah, and Osman Dembele sure loves to, to play well yeah. against them. I remember last season he was... Last season, yeah, he came on and had two assists and a goal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and now Usman Dembele is the top assistant in the league, so whenever he's on form, he's on wow. fire. This yeah. was a good start, but in central. <laughs> yeah, it really was. It really was. Uh, I remember when Joe Felix did that against uh, Hetafi. Yeah, Hetafi, <laughs> yeah, and then no one has heard the, from, from the guys. <laughs> and yeah, but Antoine Griezmann, though, he's on fire right now. If yeah. anyone's on fire, do you see his goal, his first goal? Yeah, um, good Olympic. <laughs> yeah. Do, do you think, who do you blame for that? Is is that great? Nah, Rui Re- Silva or... has blood on his hands for two of those goals. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I mean, the thing is that Real Betis, right? They came into this match because one of their star players got sent off, and you could argue he should have maybe kept his mouth shut, knowing how Spanish referees are. No, I, I disagree with that, though. It's like, if, if you're much here, oh, go on, go on. And I, like, here's the thing I feel sorry for the player, but then, like, you should know that these referees, they're not. They're not that they are the brightest tools in the box, sorry to say. So yeah. it's better to just avoid putting yourself in a situation where they'll send you off or something. Yeah, I, I get that, right? But I'll tell you why I disagree with it. Because I, I feel in any human endeavor, in any human relationship, mm-hmm. if you set a tone for that relationship, you have to play by the rules of that tone. Mm-hmm. And it seems like Mateo Lajos and Canales, they had a very like they had a more personal relationship. Right. <laughs> and Canales was talking to him and he's like, oh, Canales, don't speak. And it's like, yeah, tell me not to speak, but don't ask me about like personal things later on. And I feel that's a fair statement, right? Because mm-hmm. that's the nature of the relationship. So I mm-hmm. felt the yellow was a bit excessive at sometimes. But you're right. Sometimes referees in Spain, they can they have their head screwed up. But I feel the fact losing Canales, not having Fekir and not having Kwame has really affected Betis in recent weeks because... The creativity is just not there. Yeah. And then, you know, it's, it, against Atleti, they're a dangerous team in the sense that they only need one or two chances to kill you. So you have to make sure you to make you create enough to kill them. But that wasn't the case today. Griezmann was ex, has been excellent in the last three games because you remember against Ryu in midweek. Oh, man. Even though he didn't score, this guy was pulling the strings yeah, and was wow. excellent and didn't deserve and deserved the win for, for himself. He did. He was so brilliant. It's like, it was like watching Griezmann from 15, 16 mm-hmm. again, like he was just passing the ball. It, it mm-hmm. was, in some ways, it was doing what Barcelona felt he was going to do at Barcelona. Like mm-hmm. that version of Messi, he's not as good as Messi by any chance, but like that version of Messi that plays in the midfield, that brings the ball up, that provides the killer assist. That's clinical. Yeah, he was amazing in that right game. I really mm-hmm. think his performance is like one of the best performances I've seen from an individual in La Liga this season. Without yeah, doubt. I agree. I, I agree with you there. And he's shown that to them. He's winning the fans back over. You know, he's apologized to them for the whole Barca stuff and whatever. And it's as a fan of the league, it's good to see Griezmann do well. Yeah. And I want to talk a bit about Atleti because away from home, they've been really good. They've got some yeah. performances. Like they won at the Via Marine, which is tough. They've won at Sanchez Pichuan. Granted, Sevilla is not the same Sevilla, but still, <laughs> like they've, they've won at Mestaya, they've won at Samamed, they got a draw at Anueta. Yeah. Like, these are places that are normally tough for like even Madrid and Barca to go to. Mm-hmm. But the thing is, they've won in all those big stadiums and all those like tricky banana skin stadiums. But they still find themselves eight points behind Real Madrid. It just shows their home form has been up to Yeah, their home form has been uncharacteristically poor this year. I mean, granted, one of that, those losses was to Madrid, but then against Villarreal at home, they were absolutely outplayed. Against Rayo, they got pegged back. 
a, the optimistic Rayo fan could have argued they deserved more than a draw. Girona fans would definitely say they deserve the draw in yeah. that game. So Athletic's home form needs to pick up quickly. Their away form has been absolutely magnificent. No doubt about that. And, and if you're an Atleti fan, right, you're seeing the way the team is playing. You're seeing two faces because mm-hmm. at one point with Griezmann coming in, you see this team is a team that maybe has the quality to put up a fight in this title race. But then you see performances in the Champions League where they haven't really been good. The game against Rayo where in the first half they were excellent, but in the second half they let Rayo come back in. And yeah. how, do, how would you rate the season so far going into this World Cup break? Yeah, that... That's the thing. It's a that's a difficult thing to read because when you see some of, a lot of their performances, especially at home, you'll be like, this has been poor for them. But then when you look at the stats, they were three points behind us in match day ago, but then they messed up against Rayo. And there was even some talk between athletic fans like, oh, we could challenge for the league. But then on the other hand, the Champions League games that they've dropped, especially given the context of their group, I feel that's what's weighed down on their season more than anything. But in the league, I feel like in this like week of nobody wanting to finish third, they've done pretty good to get that position now. True, true. Let's talk about some of the sides that didn't want to finish third, unless you have to say something about Real Betis. Um, Real Betis, right? yeah. 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 Keeping, keeping 11 men on the pitch would be absolutely <laughs> helpful. And, this is a personal opinion, Rui Silva. You really messed up my fantasy team this week. <laughs> yeah, I have, I have a friend who's like from Spain and he really likes Betis and he's, he always complains that Bravo is not playing. <laughs> yeah, he, honestly, I was, I was angry that he that Pellegrini started Bravo in midweek because I'm like, my clean sheet from Rui Silva, but then I'm like, okay, you know what? Maybe I should actually buy Bravo. <laughs> After this game. Sure, sure. But the good thing for Betis is that they're already through in the Europa League group, a tough group with Roma. They might finish first, who knows? Mm -hmm. Um, Ross has said that they're also doing really well in the Europa League. They went on their record run, but yeah, it's the league. Yeah, by the league. Real Valladolid have been on the time this week. Oh man, yeah. They (laughs) tore about (laughs) Celta. Yeah, they tore Celta patch 4 1. Then Sergio Leon, the most informed striker in the Liga right now, <laughs> scored again against Real Sociedad. And yeah, so if Real Sociedad in this River game, they had a couple of goals that are ruled out. So you could say they were unlucky. Yeah. But yeah, you have to give a lot of credit to Pacheta and Real Valladolid because as it stands now, they are a point away from Valencia. Wow. If you gave, if you told Pacheta he'd be a point away from Valencia at this point of the season, he'd tear your hand off. Yeah, four four points away from Europe, even. Um, that, if you ever did get to Europe, that would be quite something. <laughs> I don't see that happening. That yeah. said, they're doing really well. You know, it's not just Sergio Leon. Um, Alvaro Guado has been quietly having a good season in midfield for them. And I feel like, I mean, I predicted they stay up, but. This past week has given more evidence that they might stay up even more comfortably. And we have to remember, Weisman hasn't even started getting amongst the goals yet again. No, he hasn't. And I, I saw I saw some of the highlights of that game against Salton. Just the way they play, the passing of play was really nice to see because um, by the lead historic fan, we've spoken about this in previous pods, they've been a team that's really been dull, really been dire, but yeah. hopefully this season with Pacheta's energy. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. Pacheta was really energetic at Elche and Huesca, so I was like, I don't think they'll play the way they played in their last Primera stints this year. Yeah, let's move on to Villarreal because they got a win. They're somewhat back in the top four race. Did you see the red card? Yeah, and here's why that's stupid. I get taking off your shirt or any part of your sportswear is a yellow card offense. But he didn't take it off completely. No. I'm like, why? Give, okay. The thing is that people are like, if you do it, an emotional celebration, let's say for a passion of someone, some people argue you shouldn't be booked at all. 
I said the rule is the rule, but then he didn't break the rule. That's my issue. He yeah. didn't take his shirt off completely. What's wrong with these referees, man? I, I have no idea. Like, it's just the context was there for him to be Do a better man. Like, just, just, yeah. Just no, no, the, 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 fun, the, fun, the, the actual problem is that he doesn't, he didn't follow the actual written rule. Yeah. Where's IFAB? IFAB should come and look at this. Like, uh, that, this, take, he, if he took off his shirt completely, fine, book him. Yeah. Granted, this an emotional celebration, and you should stick to the rules no matter what the, these things, because referees are judged, referees are rated, and I'm sure that some of these referees' ratings are tired. But anyway. <laughs> Yeah, he just wanted to be the star of the show, but mm-hmm. it, it didn't appear to affect Villarreal, who started this game actually poorly in the first half, but they came back despite the 10 men, and they won this game in dramatic yeah. fashion at the end with Jackson. He's been criticized by a lot of people. They don't understand why he's starting, but he sure showed his work in that. Yeah, Jackson really needed this goal, too, because since scoring a match they won against Rover, he hasn't really been taking his chances, but recently he's been getting more good involvement. Like he set up Danjuma against Osasuna two matches ago. And it's good to see the guy have his confidence back. And also felt it was one of the few bright sparks for them at Camp New because he was also linking up well with Danjuma, setting him mm. up for the few chances the area and in that first. Yeah, uh, yeah, I'll say he was definitely one of their best players on the night. Yeah, and uh, Maria, we haven't we, we haven't really spoken about them recently, but boy, did they get a big win on Thursday, on Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday? I forget. <laughs> but it got yeah, a, it was... they got a really good win, three zero at mm-hmm. halftime. Girona came back, but they took them out of the drop zone. Yeah, uh, Maria almost done did all their good work. So, <laughs> I mean, partially that that game was the game of the two absolutely terrible goalkeepers who should just <laughs> retire because. Yeah. A lot of those goals were avoidable, like Embarba's free kick. That um, that I do it. That's Embarba's first goal since maybe 2020, yeah. and then for in the in the first division, by the way. Wow. I'm like, you should do better than that, Juan Carlos. The second goal. I mean, it's not all Juan Carlos's fault. They, I think. No, the second goal. I think um, the that. second one. I forgot. Was it Bueno? I think I, it was I, Bueno. I think it was Bernardo who's heading it back. Yeah, but it was Bernardo. It was Bernardo that. Had they back and there was no communication there at all. The first goal, I can't remember a first goal where I'm sure he did something wrong. <laughs> yeah, he, he got a hand to it, but it wasn't strong enough. I, I'll say the second one reminded me of the re one where it's like Mandy's like heading it back, hoping the goalkeeper is. Yeah, no, no, that, that one is more, that one is worse. That one is yeah, worse. <laughs> yeah, but Amaria, they got the rub of the green in that, in that game. Mm-hmm. In this game, that went against ten men. I expected them to take more advantage of the fact that Villarreal mm. they were they they're suffering from a bit of a crisis of confidence at the moment in terms of the strikers, in terms of them not scoring, and they really didn't. It seemed like Villarreal were still playing eleven men despite the fact they were down to ten men. Yeah, once I, once they went back to ten men, I was a bit worried at first, but then they showed a lot of composure to eventually get a much needed win. I mean, losing against Barcelona, and when you factor in the unfortunate loss of um, Mr. Lanzano, yeah. I hope I say his name right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, they re- the whole club really needed this win yeah. today, and I'm glad they got it. And it was nice what the players did, where they gestured up to the sky. Yeah, no, that gesture was beautiful. Game. Yeah, and and something we forget that Villarreal, they've actually suffered a lot of injuries, like not just Gerard. Before mm-hmm. it got injured, um, Pedraza got injured against Barcelona. La Celso is injured. La Celso is injured. Capoue was in there against Barcelona. Mm-hmm. Coquelin was in there against Barcelona. And, it, and I know they received a lot of criticism for the way they performed in that game. But listen, like Barca, they lost a lot of players and they are not the same team. So mm-hmm. how do you expect It, can, it happens out? to anybody. Yeah. Yeah. Should we move on to their city rivals, Valencia, who... Yeah. Oh my God! So, <laughs> the uh, the so, Neda is like <laughs> crashing. Yeah, how they, how, they let the, how they let this game slip was just shocking. Oh. And I was I was watching it. I was like, "There's no way you guys have just let Mallorca score two. <laughs> Mallorca, a team that scored one, and they're like, 
good job. Let's keep a clean sheet now. But two, I two big batters even worse. Kangin Lee, your former boy, was the one to score the winning goal and a great winning goal at that man. Yeah, it's okay. I, I, I'm still in shock. <laughs> Yeah, I can't believe I won zero. I'm just like, okay, this is it. The three points are sealed, mm. close to the top four. But then, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm at too. I'm at has been playing well in their last oh, two yeah. games. Uh, yeah. He's added something really different to their attack and the supporting Murici and can game well. Yeah, I haven't really seen that from him in the first division before. So, but like seeing him against Ralph Sociedad and mm-hmm. he, he had a goal that he should have had. Like, yeah. wrongly disallowed and in this game I thought he really changed the dynamic of the game he mm-hmm. forced the penalty he was like that's creating extra threats and you could tell by how the team celebrated when he scored that goal against Russell's dad that was chalked off how much yeah. it means to be- the best yeah because we have to remember Matt had missed the start of his season because he had to have a foot amputated yeah so it's it's pretty good that he's doing well. Hopefully, he gets a goal soon. Yeah, it does. And Mallorca, they're just three points off the relegation zone, which is insane. It's We have such a really tight relegation zone in La Liga because yeah. it's up here in the relegation zone now with, with nine points. And six points ahead of them is Rayo, Vallecano, and Valencia. And Rayo were brilliant this Saturday. Yeah. Did you see that coming, a 5-1 against Kelly? I didn't particularly. I I thought Ryo would win, but I didn't see this scoreline. I didn't see Lejeune scoring the brace. <laughs> yeah, Lejeune, Lejeune has the most freaky goals in the league this season. Uh, our new uh, Lionel Messi. Ta, 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 the the new Lionel Messi of the league. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it was it was great because it was also very important that Alvaro Garcia scored the goal it's first of the season and Camello continues. Is good form. Atleti, Atleti Lonis have been doing pretty well too. Oh, yeah, to be they, I like the teams that have them have their players on loan are really going to miss them next season. Yeah, <laughs> but but Raya, I feel the thing we're forgetting is that they still have a secret weapon to come up in January. Raul ah, Raul de Tomas. Thomas. <laughs> they still have that. So if they're doing this well now, given the fact that they won this week. In, uh, in the derby against um, Hetafe, they really struggled. But I do feel that they're, they're doing really well and they're going, to, they're going to be real threats in La Liga. Yeah. But the thing is that we have to remember Real de Tomas' kind of attitude problems he has sometimes. How would that like, affect the squad? Because things ended really badly in Espanol also. Yeah, they, if that, that's that's something rare fans can be wary of. But he's been there before. I'm sure if he receives enough love and it, the right amount of importance, because you have to give these flip players the deuce. Yeah. Uh, I, th- I think he'll make, elevate them to another level. Yeah, yeah, I think so too. I think so too. And what did you think about Girona today? They were up against Osasuna. Yeah, and Girona winless in like four or five games. Right? I thought they. Put up a decent, they had a decent go at it today. Not as, not as, they weren't as good attacking wise as they were against Almeria, in my opinion. But I guess for a new promoted team, any point you can take is a great one. Yeah, I would, I would definitely agree with that. And in terms of Osasuna, like, do you feel mid table is the limit, or do you feel maybe they have a chance to fight for mm-hmm. Europe? Uh, I feel like giving the strength of the other teams around the middle is a little, but they're getting good results. Like they won against Espanyol during the week. And, but that's the thing. When you win one game and you draw or lose the next game, that, that's not consistency. And we're talking about another European contender in Real Sociedad that just went on an eight-game winning streak in all competitions. Now yeah. That's consistency. Yeah, that's Speaking crazy. of consistency, I want to highlight one Girona player, Alex Garcia. Oh, this guy, crazy. every time I check so far score rate, this guy doesn't <laughs> get less than a seven. He's an enigma. Yeah. <laughs> he, his team can lose 5-3 and he still has a 7.9 rating. I don't get it. 
Yeah, I, so anytime I, I watch Jona, I zoom in on this guy. I'm like, okay, what are you doing? <laughs> I think the thing is, he has like a sweet left. He has like a sweet foot. Yeah, has a very mm. sweet left foot. He can hit the ball very well. Like I remember in the game against Atleti where he scored. He, he didn't score, but like he had a good shot there. Yeah, he he he, he can hit with either foot too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that that's what's great about him, though. That's what's really great about him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, let's see. And then let's talk about Espanol. They just can't get the win over the line, even if they're playing against uh, the billeted Elche, who got destroyed against Real Madrid. Yeah. I know. I saw an Espanol fan tweet the other day. This is going to be a long season. And it certainly feels like that, given we've talked about how Espanol didn't prepare for this season well at all. And I'm guessing we're seeing the fruit of that. So, from a Spanish point of view, they can't wait for January to come so they can address the gaping holes you have in the squad. Because I feel they they can do it another midfielder. If they can get a defender that does, isn't as airprint as Cabrera or Sergio Gomez, that'll be even better. Yeah. Apparently, I've heard the stat. I'm not sure whether it's true, but Cabrera and Sergio Gomez have not won a game in La Liga this year. Uh, Ah, the new, they are the, the new, okay, the Frutos and <laughs> what's the name of this young striker that was in Levante last year, oh, and that. even Carlos Clark, Carlos Clark is on yeah. a serious <laughs> winless run, yeah, and and, and, and so Alte, run too. yeah, yeah, I'll say I've had a mini manager bounce besides being destroyed by Real Madrid, but hey. Who doesn't get trash by Real Madrid these days? <laughs> yeah, that, that's very true. That's very true. And let's move on to Celta Girona. I'm sorry, Celta Etape, which is tomorrow. But the reason yeah. I want to talk about it is because Celta Vigo right now, they are, they've been on a slightly poor run. Mm-hmm. They've lost a bunch of games and lost them convincingly. And there are rumors that this might be Chacho Kodit's last chance to save himself. Do you think that's been fair on Chacho Sol? Uh- I don't think it's fair for his job to be called into question right now. Let me just quickly look at what they're on the table. Go down. One point here from relegation. Yeah. Uh, but we've already discussed it. It's like Rai are six points away from relegation. So it's a very congested relegation. Yeah, I feel I feel like this is a Paco Lopez situation. We're sucking him right now would be absolutely stupid. So I think I think if Celta win tomorrow, they'll be fine. If they lose tomorrow. I don't think he or even um, Kike Sanchez Flores should have their jobs called into question just yeah. yet. Yeah. Maybe by the time the World Cup, because when by the time the World Cup rolls around, teams can just have enough time to clearly think about this thing. Yeah. Because making a courage decision now would be stupid, in my opinion. Uh, it, will be. it will be. And with that done, we're done with our La Liga match reviews. But let's move on to the best team of of the week. We've had two match days, so you can pick from both and the best player. Uh, well, are we putting two match days together? Yeah, why not? Okay. I'll say Dusk is the best player this week. This week and... Yeah, he had three goals, two assists. That uh, an assist, I mean. Yeah. And best team, I'll give it to Real Bad the week. Yeah. Actually, you know it. Yeah, best player though, and this uh, best in River because they got two huge scalps this week. True, sure, true. Sure. I was gonna go uh, with Anton Griezmann for my best player. Yeah, Anton Griezmann is a very good shot, honestly. Yeah, and, and I'll say for the best team is Barcelona because it's really been although Real Madrid had two good performances, I just mm-hmm. it's been good how they recovered yeah. so quickly. Mm-hmm. And yeah, that, that's yeah as long as point. as long as Barca can keep those. That three points gap closed or I just keep focusing on what they can do because there's still the game I can't do. Granted, I don't think both teams will be winning every game until then, but who knows? Yeah, I, I think this the aim will be for any team that's chasing Madrid right now is just to keep winning and mm-hmm. hope somewhere and they slip up. Because yeah. the, the one situation a team wouldn't want in this title race right now is that they keep slipping up and eventually the gap is so large mm-hmm. that you have to 
do a miracle almost to get back into a reasonable points gap, which is where Barcelona were last season. Yeah. yeah. And now, should we move on to the UK? Yeah, yeah, let's do it quickly. I think the timer is... Yeah. Our boy yeah. Holland was was in form again. He scored, he scored twice. Yeah, against... What did he play against? I think they played against Brighton. They, they played play against Brighton and won 3-1. Yeah, uh, Brighton will feel like I've done with their old boss, um, <laughs> Mr. Why am I forgetting his name? Potter. Goodness. Harry Potter. Yeah, Harry, Harry <laughs> Potter. But he couldn't work his magic to stop my United from getting his last minute equalizer. No, no, he couldn't yeah. work his magic. Yeah. Yeah. That, that was Casimir's first goal for the club, you know. One of their signings is doing well. And to be fair, my United have result have him. Um, Rally the troops a bit because they also beat Tottenham. Granted, Newcastle also beat Tottenham, so that's something. <laughs> for, that's something to keep bear in mind. Yeah. There has been, despite the off the pitch drama, my United have been doing well on the pitch, and they're fifth now. Nice. Oh, nice. sorry, sixth. Nice. Liverpool, though they keep on. Yeah, Liverpool are like Jekyll and Hyde. Yeah. How do you go from winning against City and stopping Haaland <sighs> to? Getting stopped by stopped by Nottingham Forest. Like that's just crazy from Liverpool. And do you think they would get into that top four in England? Or do you feel I, maybe it's better for them to just focus on doing well in Champions League and I think I think they'll I think they'll get up for I mean Tottenham are practically holding their position for them right now. <laughs> and New, Newcastle. Newcastle is amazing because Newcastle actually fought. <laughs> Yeah, that, that's incredible things. Mm. And let's move on to Serie A. Mm. And in Serie A, there was a big game today, Roma versus mm. Napoli. Yeah. Um, also, another big game in, involving the Roman team was Atalanta mm. and <laughs> Lazio. Yeah, but yeah. It's, it seems like, despite what you try at Napoli, Mm-hmm. The bottling allegations, the fact that they don't yeah. have to do they're still unbeaten. They're still unbeaten, and they yeah, and that's and their nearest competitor in Atlanta lost the game, so things are looking good for the Cavadona crew. Yeah, yeah, but Milan, they're like just right underneath them. They're three mm-hmm. points behind them, mm-hmm. and with Milan, they have that situation in the Champions League where they're a bit in trouble in the group. Do you feel after this week they can turn it around? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and Inter, they had a crazy game against Fiorentina, didn't they? Yeah, tr- yeah and the three four goes back and forth. They were winning to nil at first. Fiorentina made a good fight of it. And yeah, Inter, they've, since the international break, they've really been good in both competitions they're in. Yeah. And it, it seems like that's just going to spur them on to maybe finish top four. But do you think there's a chance that Napoli does what Napoli did last season and in, allows Inter to somehow find themselves into a title yeah. picture? It's Napoli, so we can't rule that out. No. <laughs> but hopefully Na- Napoli can go all the way this time. Yeah, they can. Juventus won 4-0, but the big game for them will be against Benfica and Lisbon. How do you see yeah. that going? Honestly, I say Benfica, to be honest. <laughs> because it's at Lisbon, and, this, and that atmosphere is really intense. I feel like we'll see a repeat of what happened to you in Israel. Sure. I also I also feel Benfica, they're in, they're in cloud nine at the moment. They won against Porto, which strengthens their position in, in Liga Nosh. Mm-hmm. And I feel they would just win this one again and solidify themselves as yeah. a quality top 16 team in, like, in terms of qualifying for the championship. Yeah. yeah. And here's the thing, even if UV beats them and Benfica are playing um, what are they, who's in their group again? Oh, Maccabi Haifa. Come on. Yeah, yeah, they're playing Haifa. Sorry. Don't forget the Israeli boys. And, and I'm not sure I'm not feeling really too well today. Yeah. <laughs> That's the thing. They're playing Maccabi Haifa next, and Maccabi Haifa don't have any. They might still have something to play for, depending on UV's results. But I feel like it's out of it's completely out of UV's hands now. They need the same kind of miracle that Barca would need. 
<laughs> sure. Sure. Let's move on to the Bundesliga and the top team in the Bundesliga, Union Berlin, they were shocked by Bochum, I believe. Yeah, they lost this weekend. Yeah. And... It's the second of the campaign, and Bayern won again, and they're eight points behind them now. Yeah, the interesting thing this does for the Bundesliga, though, is at the moment, it's just seven points separates first from 10th. Yeah. Seven. That's insane. Yeah, it's really tight there. Dortmund, so I mean, now we talked about Liverpool being a Jekyll and Hyde team. Dortmund and Mr. Jekyll and Hyde this season too, and they won 5 0 this week. So, yeah. yeah. I mean, you'd hope they, can, they, they keep being consistent, but next week they might end up losing 3 0 to Leipzig or something. They know what they're... I know. I know that Leipzig result has already happened, but I'm just giving <laughs> an example. Yeah, yeah, but you know something, they're going to welcome Erling Haaland back to the yellow wall this week. Uh, yeah, and I mean, they, if they lose to Man City, then Sevilla have a slight opening. Yeah. A very, very slight opening, which, again, they need a complete miracle. True, but, but things I can see Copenhagen beating Dortmund in, in Denmark versus... Victoria Pose and pulling off a miracle. I was going to say, I can see Copenhagen beating Sevilla, but okay. Oh, true. Yeah. yeah. Uh, true. Yeah. Uh, both ways. <laughs> I mean, oh, the most likely things in the near draw. Yeah. Because, I, because somebody starts 10 false nines. <laughs> yeah, that's the most likely scenario. And do you want to talk about your boys in France, PSG? I saw yeah. that Messi and Mbappe are now combining very well. They're assisting each other. It's all, all they, they've always combined well, even last season. It's just this season, the difference of PS is that all three of them, when they play, are playing for each other instead of playing for themselves. So that's good for PSG. And given that they beat their nearest challenger a week ago, this is just setting up to be another good league win for them. Yeah, yeah, fantastic league win for them. And next week, we'll be back if there's no strike. <laughs> so, so it depends. Our career as podcasters, young podcasters, depends on whether the clubs go on the boss's strike or not. And next week, I'll discuss more on that if there is a strike, if there is a strike, and what that means for Spanish football this season and for the rest of history yeah. in terms of being dramatic. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but anyways, I know you were sick, but you soldiered on. Thank you, Oscar, for that. I really no problem. For it. Yeah, and you, the listener, thank you for listening. Please give us a rating and and blah blah blah. Adios. Bye.